Hi everyone, welcome back to Ferrigno Freedom Channel. I'm Dante Ferrigno and I'm back for another carnivore reaction video. Now this video is not reaction to anything specifically about carnivore or against carnivore for that matter. As a matter of fact, it's about a subject that brought me to the carnivore way of eating. As many of you may already know, I've been doing the lion diet now for a little over three years, which is a version of carnivore diet that only allows for ruminant meat. So I'm not eating seafood, I'm not eating poultry, I'm not eating, eating uh, meat from other animals that are monogastric in nature. I'm only eating meat from ruminant animals, and then I'm also drinking water and having salt with my meals so that I'm getting all the electrolytes I need and all the water that I need to be able to survive properly and to live the best life that I've ever been able to live. And you know, for the past three years, it has just been amazing. I went from a lifestyle where I felt like I was ready to die most of the times to feeling like I'm ready for life. I'm ready to go take on whatever life has to bring my way. And that's all thanks to a change in diet that has changed every aspect of my life. It's changed me physically. It's changed me mentally. It's even changed my spiritual path. And it supercharged me in a way that I just have a hard time putting into words over and over. But if you've watched my channel for a while, you've seen the changes that I've gone through. And if you haven't, please go back and check out some of my older videos because where I've come from is truly amazing and I'm nothing special. There's nothing about me that makes me some genetic miracle or anything like that. As a matter of fact, I struggled with my weight all of my life. I've struggled with health issues all of my life. It seems I've had high blood pressure as long as I can remember. I smoked at a young age. I used to drink a little too much and take advantage of things that weren't good for my body on a regular basis and yet I've survived. Thank God that I survived as long as I did, long enough to find out about a carnivore way of eating like the lion diet that has changed so much for me. Now, I started this way of eating because of medical issues I was having that doctors didn't have any answers for. I would turn to them for help, and I wasn't getting any help. If anything, they were adding fuel to the fire of what was wrong with me because what was wrong with me was probably uh, greatly due to stress in my life becoming something physical uh, in my gut. But it was also a matter of all the foods I was eating, the things that I was eating that are regular everyday foods, according to most people, but are actually causing us to be less and less healthy. And for some of us who are highly sensitive, it becomes more obvious quicker. And I think that was the case with me. And I felt like healthcare, the healthcare system was leading me down a path that was actually causing me more trouble and making my life harder rather than making it better. So if you feel like that, then you may enjoy the video we're about to watch because I'm going to check out a video that says, Stay Away, Five Waves the Healthcare System Will Screw You Over by Dr. Sunil Dond. I don't know who Dr. Sunil Dond is. I just saw this video and I thought it would be interesting for us to check out together. And before we get started on that, I do want to thank everybody who has contributed to the channel through either Super Thanks or some other monetary form where you've sent something through PayPal or Cash App or whatever it happens to be because those little things that you guys do help keep me motivated to keep on going and doing the things that I do to be able to share the things that have changed my life so that hopefully I can help change your life. For those of you who have signed up for my patron, uh, my Patreon and have become a patron for me on a regular monthly basis, that support is so invaluable that I can't even express my thanks enough to let you know how much I appreciate you. But rest assured, I do appreciate you tremendously. As a matter of fact, I finally got the Ferrigno Freedom website launched. So you can go there now to ferrignofreedom.com. I'm trying to put together a lot of information in one place so that you don't have to go searching through the description of every YouTube video to look for things that I mentioned or videos or books or supplements I use or whatever it might be. And also I have created a way for us to be able to get together one-on-one -on -one to be able to talk about questions that you might have for me. I know a lot of people come in and they watch one of my videos for the very first time and they find that they would like to be able to ask me some things. They don't maybe have time to go back and watch every video I've ever made and they'd like to be able to get to the root of what's going on with them. Well, that's what I've created this coaching area for so that we can get together in a video chat once a month for an hour. I think that that would be enough to get most people on track 
with what they're looking to get answers to questions for and also be able to start a way of eating like lion diet or a standard carnivore diet that's going to change everything for you. So be sure to check out ferignofreedom.com when you get done with this video. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and see Stay Away, Five Ways the Healthcare System Will Screw You Over by Dr. Sunil Dond. <music> everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. Sadly, healthcare systems across the Western world are completely falling apart. I practice medicine in the United States and I'm from the United Kingdom. And both countries have enormous issues with their healthcare systems, both very different systems, but falling apart for different reasons. And in terms of my own practice, when I'm in the hospital, I practice acute care hospital medicine. And that's something that I think we do do quite well in the United States. We're good at reversing acute emergencies quickly. And as an outpatient, I do my own lifestyle medicine coaching away from the system. For my own personal health, as I've talked about many times before, I do everything possible to stay away from the system. I don't want to get sucked into it. I avoid physician interactions. I avoid hospital interactions, unless it's an absolute emergency because I know from working in the system what will happen. And for want of a better word, I really believe that huge segments of our system are a complete and utter scam. I want... Well, isn't that refreshing to hear somebody speaking the truth from a position of being in the medical system to be able to say what he just said. Just to start off with, the acute care part of it is obviously a very important part of what makes healthcare important to people. You know, all these years I've been watching all this debate about how we're going to handle our healthcare and how politicians wanted to be able to save us with paid for healthcare or whatever their plans or programs were, everything from the ACA to Obamacare, I mean, that was Obamacare, and whatever else care, Biden care, somebody's care that they came out with. The problem with all of this is every time government gets involved in it, it just gets more and more expensive and more and more convoluted. And that's a big part of the problem right there. But acute care is what we need the most. If we get in a car accident, if a kid falls out of a tree and breaks his leg, you know, those are the kind of things that you need to be able to turn to somebody who's a professional who can look at this situation and say, I can fix that. I have experience fixing that. I can get you fixed and back on your feet. And it shouldn't cost a fortune because a lot of these things, well, not everything anyway, some of these things can be very difficult as I had a brother who was in a car accident many years ago that totally shattered his hip and caused him so many broken bones in his legs that it was amazing they were able to get him back together as well as they were. So sometimes it's it's extremely difficult and should be expensive because they're they're piecing you back together to save your life. But sometimes if it's just like a broken arm falling out of a tree, it should be a cast, you get through it, you know, it's a few hundred bucks, no big deal. It shouldn't cost thousands of dollars like it does, but a part of the way that they've built the system together is to cause you to have to go to see this specialist and that specialist. And when you go to the ER, if you get a scan in this room, you gotta pay this company for that scan. And you go to another room and get a blood test done. Now you gotta pay three different companies for whoever did the blood test. And you only went to one place to get help, but somehow everybody's got their finger in the pie. It really can be frustrating. <clears throat> and then when it comes to trying to get answers about your health, Everything always seems to be just mushy when you get answers back from doctors about whatever's wrong. It's like they can't pinpoint, this is what we need to do. This is where the problem is. This medicine is going to cure the problem. This action is going to change the direction that your body's going. None of that. It's always about just trying to keep the pain slightly reduced, trying to keep the problem from running too far out of control. It's never about addressing the root of the problem or trying to get a designated diagnosis. At least for me, it's been the hardest thing in the world to get a specific diagnosis about anything that was ever wrong with me. And I don't know if you feel that way, but that's how I feel when it comes to healthcare is that I could do a Google search and probably figure out what's going wrong with me better than talking to most of the doctors. So I can see exactly what he's talking about here when it comes to 
the healthcare system being something that we definitely need, but there's also a need to stay away from it as far as we can too. Let's continue on. Hey, Sam, what you doing, buddy? Nothing to do with them. But it is very important that millions of people out there know the failings of our healthcare system and are prepared for what will eventually happen to either them or a family member. They should be fully prepared. And that's not to say that everybody who works in healthcare is bad. There are many fine people out there, many fine nurses, doctors, Absolutely. other professionals who do their best every single day, but they are part of a failing system. And I want to share with you in this video five ways that the healthcare system will inevitably let you down and for want of a better word pardon my french it will screw you or a family member over number one pushing drugs and treatments with absolute minimal benefits this happens a lot and i've talked about this previously there are statistical concepts in medical science known as absolute risk reduction and number needed to treat which will often or actually most of the time never be advertised and indeed the doctor prescribing these treatments will not even know them themselves. Talk about a complete failure of our system. So what happens is these medications, and they're usually for chronic conditions ranging from heart disease to high cholesterol to depression, will be dished out like candy. And millions of people are stuck taking them, often indefinitely, and often the elderly population. It is so very sad indeed. If you actually dive into the data, if you actually follow the science, which is what this is supposed to be all about, the number needed to treat might be 1 in 20, which means only 1 in 20 people will experience any benefit from taking the drug. That's what the actual statistic will show from the initial studies. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't fancy my chances if someone said, here's an expensive tablet that comes with a ton of side effects, and there's only a 1 in 20 chance that you might benefit from it, I really wouldn't fancy my chances at all. I wouldn't be keen to take it. Similarly, many drugs out there, when you actually dive into the data, show an improved life expectancy of only a few days. That's it. You take a drug religiously for years and years, and you might live a few days longer. And the problem is that the way medical science is set up and the way the medical profession is set up is that they latch onto these minimal benefits, and they don't look at the bigger picture, the patient as a whole. What else are they doing? holistic medicine, what can they do in their entirety, in their lifestyle, in their everyday life to actually reduce their chances of illness by much, much more than taking this pill? Doctors are like robots most of the time, mindlessly following protocol, doing what they are told by higher authorities. And what a failure of our system that the doctor pushing these treatments won't even be able to quote you their actual benefits. They just do whatever they are told. And the result is millions of people are left taking these treatments, whether it's a drug or another type of treatment, often for years and years, and it actually brings them minimal benefits and comes with a ton of side effects. Number two, hospital bills, healthcare system Oops. will inevitably- Hold on just a moment. Number two, I wanted to <clears throat> pause that for a moment because I have some experience in working with the elderly, having been the administrator at a retirement home, and I worked there for over 10 years, and I saw exactly what medicines that our population of residents were on, I saw how they changed. I saw how they changed across the board for multiple people within a short, spirit, uh, short span of time where the same new medicine is suddenly being prescribed for all these different residents who had different ailing issues, but they're getting the same new medicine all of a sudden. And it just, it struck me how so often this same medicine would pop up for people with different diagnoses. And it's almost as if, well, it's not almost as if. I know what's going on. I mean, we all know what's going on is that when they when they get to the end of a certain period of time where a drug cannot be made generic, the company who came up with the drug itself can't make as much money off of it as they did before it went generic and then everybody could make it. So what they do is they change the formula slightly and then the timer starts over again for them to be able to make the maximum amount of money on that medicine. And they can charge more for it because it's a new drug and insurance won't pay as much for it. And it's not as inexpensive as it would be if it was a generic option. So they come up with these things that make minor changes just enough 
to where they can sell you a new drug and then they're making as much money as they possibly can. And I don't know what it is about these pharmaceutical companies and what they work out with doctors, but it seems like they walk in there with bags of money and say, here, if you'll sell this product, we'll give you this. I don't think there's anything wrong with people selling products, but when you go to your doctor, you're not looking for somebody who's just trying to sell products. You're looking for somebody who may know of some products that would have a solution for your problem. But ultimately, like he said, most of these drugs aren't even going to be a solution for but one in 20 people. And even then, they're going to have minimal changes like the addition of several days of lifespan for years and years of taking an expensive medication. It doesn't seem like a good trade off, but people are convinced that they've got to listen to these things. They've got to keep taking this medicine. They got to keep taking this blood pressure medicine or this statin or whatever it is their doctor told them that you need this medicine. And yet when I look back at the doctors who told me those things and I realize that changing the way I eat changed my need for those medications to where I don't need those medications anymore. It just, it baffles my mind that nobody ever said, you could get to where you don't need these medicines if you do this. As a matter of fact, they were telling me to do the opposite of what would help me. If when it, Whenever it came to any suggestions for what I should be eating or what nutrition might make a difference, the suggestions were to eat the things that were already causing my problems. It's almost as if they had it planned. I don't want to say that these doctors had that planned. I think many of them are just buying into a lie that's been perpetuated from the highest levels of our government and, and, and medical officials, people in the highest positions like Ansel Keys in the American Heart Association from years back. These people that made these guidelines and these, these areas that doctors have to follow now, they follow them religiously because it's safe for them. It's in a safe zone. They can just do the rote repeating of the same information and tell their, their patients the same thing. And it, their patients keep coming back and keep needing more health care. So it keeps the money flowing in. Why would they want to change? Why would they want to look into something that might actually cure you and then you don't come back and spend money with them unless they actually have some integrity? Well, I believe there are a handful of doctors out there who do have some integrity and that are trying to do the right thing but when it's so easy to just follow the herd and make the money, it's going to be a tough system that you have to navigate. You've got to figure out what are you going to do to take control of your life. You've got to take control of your health. Don't put your life control in the hands of a doctor who works for you. You hire your doctor. It doesn't work the other way around. Don't let them tell you what to do. You let them explain to you what 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 they're recommending, why it's going to help. If they're not willing to explain that to you, if they're not willing to take the time to tell you why what they're recommending is good for you, then they're probably not telling you what's good for you anyway. And you should probably look for somebody else that's going to give you some help. And maybe that's why you're here. <laughs> you're looking for somebody else that's going to give you a little bit of help in your understanding of what's wrong. What's going on with your body? Why are you not feeling as healthy as you should? You know, Check out my videos. You know, I'll tell you right off the bat, it's probably what you're eating that's causing most of your problem. But let's get back to what his number two thing is out there that you're going to get uh, screwed over by the healthcare system about. Hospital bills and outrageous charges. The United Kingdom is lucky in this respect. But in the United <clears throat> States, hundreds of millions of people get to see their hospital bill every year, the itemized billing. And it is absolutely outrageous. The yeah. charges are indefensible. And then there's a whole game that happens with insurance companies. I do not understand anybody that can defend this. And you will see many people online, top doctors, healthcare leaders, who will be defending the status quo and the current state of things, the way the establishment is set up. And all you need to do is look at a hospital bill to realize that this system is a complete scam. What on earth is going on? Absolutely yep. outrageous that anybody could defend these outrageous charges. Number three, the probability that you will get sucked. The outrageous charges he's talking about is when you go to the hospital and you're laid up in the hospital room, they could charge you $200 for a dose of acetaminophen, which is Tylenol. 
you know, you'll see ridiculously high charges. And that's just an example. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not looking at somebody's bill here, but I have seen charges like that on hospital bills where you look and you see something very inexpensive that they, if they would have done it themselves or they would have bought something over the counter, it would have cost a few bucks. It's costing hundreds of times more than what they would cost in a, in a normal situation. Why? Why is that? We've come to accept that that's just the way it is. We've come to accept that a hammer costs $1,500 when the military makes it because it has to go through this process and that process and this company has to approve it and everybody's got to, you know, there's all these steps that have to be. And I've worked in that w world too and I've seen how convoluted and crazy and how the cost just skyrockets on things that would be a whole lot less expensive if there was just some common sense going into place rather than, I don't know, super micromanaging. I don't know what the way to put it is, but somehow they come up with this, these costs being way higher than they should be. And like he said, they try to defend it with these, uh, these uh, pointing out that you've got to have the chain of flow. You got to follow the flow of, of, of the product so that you know every aspect of where it was along the way. But ultimately, nobody's getting held responsible for anything that was done wrong along the way lately anymore. So why? Why is that being done like that? Why are we spending so much money trying to make sure we can follow that chain if there's never any accountability for people who aren't doing the right thing in healthcare or in even in the uh, industrial world? It's, uh, it's just to pad the price because usually somebody else is paying the bill. A lot of times it's the American government who's paying the bill, in, at least in my case, in my experience, the American government is paying the insurance bill or is paying for the, the industrial work that's being made. And because whoever's responsible for paying that money from the government, it's not their money. They're not living up to their fiduciary responsibility to say, you know what, we shouldn't be spending this much money to make a hammer. We shouldn't be charging this much money for somebody to get a, a single dose of Tylenol when they're in the hospital and they have a headache. It just takes common sense. Elon Musk was a great example of that and what he's done with SpaceX and how he brought the cost of bringing rockets into space to thousands of times less than what they were charging the government to do the same thing for NASA's uh, d various companies that would work with NASA to put these rockets in space because he would say, look, we got to find a way to do this. That makes sense. Not to do these things that are built into the system to make sure everybody gets their share of money. That's ultimately what it comes down to. And I think it's the same here. All right, let me back up a little bit so we can hear what he said about number three. Outrageous charges. Number three, the probability that you will get sucked into the system. This is one reason why I am very weary of mm. any interaction at all with the healthcare system. And it goes something like this, and this affects millions of people every year. A test will be performed. It could be a blood test or an imaging procedure, and there will be something very slightly wrong. But the problem with that is that there's also a slight chance that you could have something serious wrong with you. It might be a minute chance, but they've got you by the proverbial, you know what, on the basis of something small being wrong. And people get very worried, understandably, it's their health, and it will unleash a whole host of other testing, imaging procedures, blood tests, perhaps other invasive procedures, on the basis of the tiny chance that there is something wrong with you. In most other countries, this Pandora box wouldn't even be opened. And costs escalate as you have more and more tests, as you see more and more procedures, but you have well and truly been sucked into the system. Number four, admission to hospital. I feel like I get sucked in every time I just check with my doctor about getting blood work done. Uh, as much as I want to, on one hand, feel like it's good to have your blood work checked so you can see where you're at along the process, sometimes that blood work can throw you off down a tangent. And I'll give you an example of something that just happened to me recently. And I talked about this at the in my three years uh, on carnivore diet video just a few months ago back in January. At the end of the video, I got into the concern I had with my thyroid, that possibly my thyroid's been part of the problem for a long time because I had a, a, a mixture of symptoms that were hitting me at the same time right as when my blood work came back with a high TSH number. Now, high TSH means that my pituitary, I think it is, I'm pretty sure it's the pituitary gland, is trying to tell 
your thyroid make more thyroid hormone. I could be wrong about that, but I do know that it's telling your body that you need more. You're not producing enough thyroid hormone. So that's why your TSH might be elevated. And mine was technically high and I had the symptoms to go along with hypothyroid. So my doctor started me on a path of some levothyroxine and also doing follow-up blood work. I thought I needed it because I was worried. I was scared that, okay, I finally found a problem that I have. Let's find out what I need because he's kind of just guessing with this dosage amount right now. We're going to see where I, where I wind up. You know, at some point, maybe I'll need more of this medicine. Maybe I'll need less. Maybe I won't need it at all. But I wanted to know. So I was willing to go along with his prescription for this medicine. And to be, to be totally honest, because Dr. Littell, who is my regular doctor here in Ocala, He was against starting me on any medicine until he realized the symptoms were all where they were because he mentioned three specific symptoms. Unless you're having these, then I wouldn't worry about it. Well, it turned out I was having all three of those symptoms. So that told me I did have to worry about it. So now I want to try this medicine. I want to be able to get these symptoms to go away. The interesting thing is, is the symptoms themselves kind of slightly changed, but I picked up new symptoms that I didn't have before. One of those was extreme fatigue. And I felt like I was just tired all the time. And it made it impossible for me to go through my normal day. So it was costing me in one area because I wasn't able to perform on my job as much as I would like. I wasn't able to perform for you as much here over the past few months as a result of being tired so much lately. As soon as I quit taking that medicine, which it's been about a week now, a little over a week, I just cut it out altogether. The next day, I started to feel better. And since then, I haven't had that overwhelming fatigue. A couple of days after quitting, I got the blood work done. Blood work, I don't have any insurance because it's just ridiculous what insurance costs these days. And I'm trying to make it the best I can. Uh, Doing the carnivore way of eating, which has changed my health to the point, that I hardly ever get sick. So I have felt like I'm just wasting my money on insurance at this point. But when I went to get that blood work done, it was a big reminder of what insurance, you know, why it costs so much. The blood work I had done, which was three vials of blood that they drew, wind up costing $450. And then the previous blood work I had done already had cost me another $150 or almost $200 to get one vial of blood drawn. And then you go back to the first one where they drew it at the very beginning. That was another couple hundred dollars. So now I'm close to $800 in on all of this, this blood work that I've done. I've lost time and money from the work that I could have been doing if I hadn't been taking the medicine that was causing me to feel so fatigued. And as far as I know now, after the blood work, there was nothing wrong to begin with. It leaves me scratching my head and wondering, what did I spend all that time and money looking for? And that's what he's talking about. The system will suck you in. When I was the administrator at the retirement home, I noticed that I started to fall into this routine that my residents were in. They would go see their doctor every three to four months, depending on the doctor's requirements. And the requirements were based on what they had to be prescribed. So typically a doctor's visit would go the same almost every time. Hello, Miss So-and-so, how are you today? I'm fine. That's good. Well, I see everything looks about the same. I'm going to go ahead and refill all your prescriptions and we'll see you next time. So he's charging who who knows how much for this order because Medicare is paying for it anyway or their insurance or the little bit out of pocket fees or whatever it is. But the resident doesn't really care too much because they're not paying the full price. The doctor doesn't care because he's not worried about where you're going to come up with the money because he's billing the government for it. And it's just this open door that keeps revolving four times a year per person where they're just punching the time clock. They're just getting that paycheck every time they see somebody. Nobody's actually talking about what's going on with their health. Their health isn't actually improving. They're just staying medicated and they're getting by, but they're not fixing anything. And it's a constant paycheck for the doctors. It's frustrating. It's frustrating seeing that go on. It's frustrating realizing that you get caught up in that. And I didn't realize how caught up I was into it until about a year and a half into my way of eating 
when I finally left my doctor's office where I was getting prescriptions for the first year I was getting a prescription for one last medicine that I hadn't gotten off of. And right at the end of that first year when I stopped taking that medicine and I left that doctor's office and I didn't have to have a return appointment, I realized that I had broken free from what he was just talking about where you get stuck in their system because once you're in it, it's like a wheel that's just going to keep grinding away your, your finances, whether it's your money or through the, what they take from the government or both. It's just a machine that's going to eat us up. System number four, admission to hospital. At some stage, you or a loved one is going to be admitted to the hospital. And this is when you get to see firsthand how absolutely stretched our healthcare system is. Yeah. Doctors, physical therapists, phlebotomists, nurses, you name it. By the way, nurses are the absolute heroes of healthcare. On a daily basis, 100%. they are asked to do things and deal with situations that nobody should be asked to deal with. If it was up to me, I would double the pay of nurses. They deserve far more recognition. But when you're in the hospital, you get to see all of these issues firsthand. Due to the nature of hospitals, there may be a complete lack of communication. Patients will be unable to sleep. There will be too much noise. I mean, how on earth can anybody's body regenerate if they are unable to sleep? The food yeah. will be terrible. This is a complete blind spot oh. for hospitals. How is anybody going to recover from their inflammation if we are loading them up with carbohydrates and sugars? Nobody even thinks about that. If I was ever in the hospital, I would be asking a relative to bring me some good food in. I wouldn't eat the hospital food. And there's the issue of sinking in bed syndrome. That's what I call it. When somebody is admitted to the hospital and we don't get them up, such a That's simple right. thing to do. And patients just lie in bed for a long time. This happens especially to older patients. They get more and more deconditioned and weaker and weaker. And that's why I always say, if you really want to stay well, do everything possible to stay away from hospitals. If you need to be in hospital, be in and out as fast as possible. That's why I try to discharge my patients as quickly as I can. I don't system for my own system. I, oh. For my own person. Sorry, I had a hard time hitting the pause button right there. I can't tell you how true that is. We used to have this thing whenever a patient or one of our residents would go to the hospital, it was like the clock started. We got to get them out of there as quickly as possible. Uh, as loving people that were trying to take care of our residents, we would occasionally send somebody up to the hospital to check on the resident to make sure that they were getting up and moving around, asking their family members, are they getting them up? Are they helping them to walk while they're getting over this? Because the longer they lay there, a lot of times problems they didn't have when they went in the hospital would materialize simply because they're not getting the exercise they need. They're laying on their skin, which is already deteriorated from age and other issues that you know go along with diet and health. And something small very often could turn into something big. More times than I could probably count on both hands, have I seen people go into the hospital, especially elderly people, go into the hospital for an overnight stay that turned into a three or four or five and then eventually week or two and then they never even come out of the hospital or they go right out into a nursing home. When they left our care, they weren't in that shape, but when they got out of the hospital, they were in that shape. It's scary to think that you're putting your hands, your life in the hands of these people and it isn't the people who are there, the nurses who want to be able to help you who are able to give you that help because they have to follow guidelines that don't solve problems. That's the hard part to accept. That food that they feed you in the hospital is not gonna get you healthy. It's not gonna keep you healthy. It's not gonna help you fight infection. It's not gonna help you overcome inflammation. So glad to hear this doctor that I don't know from Adam mention that about sugar and getting inflammation out of your system and about people being able to be moving when they're in the hospital. It is just so important and it is so overlooked because the guidelines are there for them to follow. The food guidelines for the hospitals are also set by these government agencies who have all been misled on what health it, what, what healthy eating is. Either they've been misled or they're doing the misleading, but either way, it's not healthy. And that's the scary part. All right, let's see, where were we at? 
everything possible to stay away from hospitals. If you need to be in hospital, be in and out as fast as possible. Yes. That's why I try to discharge my patients as quickly as I can. I don't want them to get other complications. Not to mention medical error, which is estimated to be the third leading cause of death. Think about that. This is not deliberate. It is a reality of the nature of people being sick and what hospitals are like. And I would advise anybody, if you have a loved one in the hospital, watch like an absolute hawk. Be on top of things. What medications are being given, what tests need to be done. If you sense that anything is wrong, then speak up. Don't be afraid of getting on the backs of the professionals. Do not be shy. We're talking about life and death. If I had a loved one in the hospital, I would be watching all the time, like a hawk, to make sure nothing slips through the net. And number five, this is perhaps... That is so 100% true. You have got to be in charge when you take somebody to the hospital. When you have a loved one that's there, somebody has to be watching, asking questions. Why is this medicine here? What's the purpose of this? Before they take it, because so many times it's so easy for communication to get mixed up or somebody to suggest something that is not even like the patient could be allergic to it. I have seen it happen over and over where they'll put a patient on a medicine that they should know if they read the notes that this patient is allergic to that medication and it just gets overlooked. You have got to watch out for yourself or for your loved ones if you're in a situation like that. Yes, the nurses have a lot. They're good, caring people who work hard to do the right thing. But sometimes they're just cogs in that machine too. And they're following along with what they've been told. And they've got to do what they've got to do. So sometimes they might miss it. And it's going to frustrate them when you ask those questions. It's going to make the doctor angry when you ask those questions. But it's life and death in a lot of cases. So you've got to be the one that's watching. You've got to be the one that's asking the questions. Because nobody else is going to do it. And when it happens, when, when neglect or bad choices or miscommunications cause that problem, so many times it gets completely missed that that was what caused it or there's, difficult, it's, there's difficulty in proving it. So there's no recourse you have. You just have somebody who's e either sicker or worse and now you've got to pay the bill on top of that. You know, it's a rough situation. But we've got to be in charge of our own health and we've got to demand the quality of health that they're charging us for. That's the most important and the one that bothers me the most. And that is the system won't be there for you when you really need them. This actually concerns me more for the United Kingdom than it does the United States. I think we have pretty decent emergency care in the US. We suffer in other ways, like try finding a new primary care doctor in most parts of the country. But in the UK, there is a big problem with emergency care. And here's why it bothers me. Take my elderly relatives in the United Kingdom. They have paid into the system. They've dutifully paid their taxes for 50 or 60 years. And in their moment of need, whether it's in their 60s, 70s, 80s or 90s, the one time they need emergency care, it lets them down. It could be an ambulance that isn't arriving on time. It could be an unacceptable delay in the emergency room. It could be not having enough doctors to see you. It could be left lying on a corridor all night. But all of these things after contributing for years and years. And in your moment of need, you have a higher chance of something catastrophic happening because the system is not there for you. Now, in the United States, we have Medicare, and the system fails us in different ways. But that, to me, is the ultimate fail of a healthcare system. If it is not there for you in your hour of need, then what is the point? What was the point of paying taxes all those years? In the United States, you paid insurance money all those years, and when you need them, they let you down. So those are just five ways then that the healthcare system screws over millions and millions of people every year. There are probably more. If you can think of any more, feel free to comment down below. I totally agree with all of that. Everything he said is something that we need to be uh, taking into account for our own health purposes. You know, this whole thing about bringing health care into the government realm where government's supposedly going to pay for health care, I have been saying for years that it's going to lead to a situation where you don't get any health care at all and they just wind up owning your body and owning your life. And 
how is the current situation we live in any different than what I've been saying for those 30 years of my life that I've been arguing against this, that I've been trying to say that if you take the value out of healthcare, if you take the value for value exchange out of, out of it, where you go to the doctor and say, doc, hey, I got a broken arm. I got a problem. I need you to fix it. I'll pay you if you can fix it. And then they can fix it and then you pay them. And if they try to fix it and fail, but it was because it was something that was beyond their ability because, you know, I don't know what, but I mean, sometimes there's, there's going to be situations where they can't fix everything, but you still paid for their expertise. At least you were able to count on the fact that they were going to try their best. Now the guidelines are designed to where they're not even trying their best. They're not even doing the things that need to be done to help get you healthy. They're just checking boxes that don't matter to anything to do with your health. The healthcare system is already not for, there for you when you need it. How many times have I seen my mother-in-law go to a doctor about a problem where she's been recovering from this cancer situation, but she doesn't get any answers to anything. She gets new problems from the medicine she's getting, but no answers for the first problem she has. Everything is just adding to her problems. That to me is extremely frustrating, knowing that she's counting on her Medicare to pay for the cost of all this stuff. But what about all the time she spends going to these doctors and only getting frustrated, only getting, in some cases, yelled at by the doctor for arguing with them or asking questions? The healthcare system's already not there for you because it's been, it's become something that it's not. It, it, there, it's like the money is already there in their mind and you're just an annoyance that they have to deal with to get at it for a little while. Well, I don't want to be completely negative about the whole situation, but I'm telling you, like he said, the best thing you can do for your health care is to stay healthy enough to not have to go and get health care. If you're lucky enough to avoid getting in a car accident or falling out of a tree or doing something extreme, you know, doing sports and you fall and hurt yourself, you know, those are the things that you, you can't help it. You got to go when those things happen. But if you're able to keep yourself from having to go back to find out about that pain that's in your chest or that problem that's in your, you know, whatever it's going on that turns out to be cancer or something else, if you're eating the right things, so many of those problems can be avoided. We're finding out with story after story of people who have gone to a carnivore way of eating that have reversed diabetes, they've, they've fought back cancer and leukemia and different kind of problems, people that had gout and uh, stomach disorders, uh, autoimmune disorders, all of these things, people are seeing breakthroughs and changes in their lives. They're putting diabetes into remission and not having diabetes anymore. People who are diabetic, diagnosed diabetic, no longer being considered diabetic because their body is working like it's supposed to again because they're feeding it the right kind of foods. That's the best way to stay out of the healthcare system. That's the best way to keep them out of your pocket. And if you can keep them from voting about options to get more into your pocket, then vote that way too. That's all I've got to say about the issue. And I hope you found some value in this video today because uh, I did. I'm really thankful to see that Dr. Sunil Dond is, is on this subject. And we may have to check out some more from him next time. Be sure to check out the original video in the description in case you want to share that video with your friends. Or if you want to share this video with your friends, I certainly appreciate that because that helps the channel also. And the more people I can reach, the more people we can help get healthy. The more healthy people there are in our society, the happier society is going to be. I'd like to live in a healthy, happy society. How about you? Well, that's all I got for this one, guys. I'll see you next time. Stick around for a quick word from one of my affiliates. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? The carnivore bar compared to movie theater snack prices? It's no competition. With a tub of popcorn running you over $14, I'd much rather enjoy the salty, crunchy, meaty goodness of a carnivore bar any day. And I don't have to cheat to enjoy my night out. Carnivore bar. Save 10 to 20% when you use my link in the description of this video.